What's up, potheads and political junkies? I'm Jeremiah Vandermeer. You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. Uh, we're actually starting just a little bit early this week. It's about 10 minutes to the hour. Um, and that's because we wanted to fit in Mason Tavert, who's with me now, of the Colorado Ballot Initiative to Legalize Marijuana. Mason, good to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, well then, last time you came on the show, it was, I think, before the signatures were actually all validated. Uh, you were in the process of working on those. Of course, they were, and you guys are officially on the ballot, which is totally awesome. But maybe for those who don't know and who didn't see the last show, you could explain how um, Amendment 64 would actually change the laws in Colorado. Sure, yeah, essentially what it will do is it will regulate marijuana like alcohol. And basically what that means is remove the penalties for adults who are possessing and growing uh, marijuana privately. It would establish a system in which we have a licensed retail stores, a licensed cultivation facilities, uh, product manufacturing. Uh, would, uh, obviously, there would be some taxes involved, sales and local taxes, uh, a bit of an excise tax that's uh, capped that would go towards benefiting public school construction. And the third thing that's really great is that it allows for the legal cultivation of industrial hemp. So that's a, a nice bonus in there that we were lucky enough to, to get included. So, uh, yeah, essentially we're ending marijuana prohibition. We're shifting from a prohibition model to a legal regulatory model, which is how we treat any legal product. Right, and, and alcohol is the model for this, as you said. Um, and that's kind of been something that you've been working on for a long time, the Safer Than Alcohol campaign. Um, Mason, maybe tell people a little bit about what Safer's mission has been. Sure. Well, you know, Safer's been working in Colorado for the last seven years to educate people about the very simple fact that I'm sure many of, uh, of you folks know is that marijuana is safer than alcohol. And unfortunately, uh, the majority of, of people here, at least in, in our country, in the United States, uh, still don't understand that. And they think that marijuana is more harmful or as harmful as alcohol, when we obviously know it's far less toxic, it's far less addictive, it's far less problematic socially when it comes to contributing to crime and that type of thing. So by making sure people understand that fact, we're able to get them to appreciate that it's a waste of law enforcement resources to worry about and punish people who are simply using marijuana. It's a, a certainly silly directed money towards an illegal market and it could be going towards legitimate Colorado businesses. And of course, perhaps the big thing is that, you know, we should not be making criminals out of adults who are simply using a substance that is going to be less harmful than alcohol. So we've been working hard to get people to understand those facts and more so than ever they do state and as a result there's more public support. Right, and actually now Safer and you have published a book um, not too long ago, right? Just a year or two ago now? Uh, yeah, back in uh, 2009, I co-authored a book along with uh, Steve Fox from the Marijuana Policy Project, who was also co-founder of Safer, and Paul Arpentano of Normal, and uh, essentially laying out this argument that marijuana is less harmful than alcohol, providing all the facts, but also explaining why this is needed politically uh, and we really need to start making sure adults uh, around the country understand that what marijuana is, because we simply tell people that we should tax them and make money. And think bad for you as as peril. Well, it's going to be very difficult to convince them to make marijuana legal. But if we make sure they are aware of the fact that marijuana is relatively benign, saying let's let's tax it, let's save resources on this, they're far more open to it. Awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Amendment 64. Uh, I've been following some of the news uh, that's been coming out of Colorado lately. One of the things that just happened was the Colorado Voters Guide. And I guess there's language that's published in that guide every year or when there is a ballot initiative. And there was a bit of controversy about that, and some of the language didn't actually make it in there. Is that right? Well, what's unfortunate is that the language did make it in there, is that the Legislative Council, which is charged with producing the Blue Book, uh, they go through several drafts and comments and, and so on, they produced a Blue Book that included uh, sections with arguments for and arguments against the initiative, as they're required to. And in the arguments for, they mentioned what I just did, is that, you know, 
this would be a, a better use of law enforcement resources to focus on violent crime instead of adults using marijuana, that marijuana is harmful than alcohol, that the penalties for marijuana are too extreme given how relatively safe it is. And that was put forward and a group of legislators uh, mistakenly and then kind of underhandedly after that removed that. And as a result, uh, they produced a voter guide that has 75% more words in the arguments against section and the arguments for section. Right now, you said it was a mistake to start with, but then there was something more nefarious after that. Well, yeah. Essentially, what happened is it was it, uh, when the vote, when the legislative council, a group of legislators, uh, voted on this. Uh, several of them were unaware of what they were voting on, and it was very confusing. Uh, a legislator, you know, brought forward this motion to uh, take out a couple words from some sentences, and so they voted on doing that, and lo and behold, they were then informed that they had just removed three more sentences, which uh, six out of the, of the 13 legislators there did not have to do. And they tried to put them back, and they didn't. They were unable to do it because they didn't have two thirds of the group. And uh, ultimately, the the legislative council staff could have just corrected this mistake, but they opted to to go ahead and keep it as is, and really, uh, you know, screw up the process. It's supposed to be fair and impartial. And when there's 75 percent more words opposing the initiative than there are supporting it, it's hardly fair to any objective observer. Wow! No kidding, huh? Well, you guys have definitely had uh, your fair share of support, and of course there's been a few detractors as well in Colorado, but I've been reading about a lot of different endorsements. Maybe you could run through some of the major endorsements for the initiative. Yeah, it's been uh, really incredible to see the groups that have been coming out. I suppose one of the most impressive uh, is that the Colorado Democratic Party as a whole adopted a platform this year endorsing, or I should say officially supporting the initiative. Uh, they don't like using the term endorse, but what, uh, whatever. They officially support the initiative. And uh, more than a dozen county Democratic parties, including the largest counties in the state, all endorse the initiative. So uh, we also have the NAACP, as well as the ACLU of Colorado, uh, several of the larger criminal justice reform organizations that do a lot of legislative work around the state. Uh, state Public Defender, we recently just got the, uh, just yesterday, of the National Latino Officers Association and the Black Blacks and Law Enforcement of America, which are two prominent national associations. And then, of course, we've gotten local council members and town council members, county commissioners, the national enforcement of a county down in County and all their county commissioners voted doing. So, you know, and I, one final one I should throw in is uh, more than 100 college professors from our state country. It's uh, been very helpful. Yeah, no kidding. That's an impressive list. But of course, there have been the detractors as well. And I, I was reading one, the governor recently came out, and I thought uh, he said some ridiculous things as usual. It was the old patent, boilerplate, drugs are bad kind of argument. Um, has there been, uh, besides the governor, has there been other high-profile people coming out against it? Well, you know, just as we've seen in the past, those who come out against it tend to be folks who profit off of making marijuana, keeping marijuana illegal. So, uh, you know, we see the, the, the chiefs and the sheriffs and the narcotics officers associations and, and really the folks who really they benefit from keeping marijuana illegal and continuing to arrest and prosecute. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. We have a lot of law enforcement officials who do appreciate that it's marijuana prohibition is a failure. But, of course, uh, there are... Uh, those types of officials that want to keep the, the funding flowing in, they want to pad their budgets, and they're very fearful of losing that stream of, of revenue. Uh, and then, of course, we see uh, some folks, uh, you know, some, some political folks who are just not involved on the issue yet. And they, you know, claim that they've seen marijuana hit newborns and they, you know, just go off on, on insane rants. Uh, and then, of course, we see some drug treatment professionals who are just cashing in on the criminal justice referrals. You know, our, our courts cannot handle all the marijuana arrests that take place, so we funnel them into drug treatment to avoid going to court. And as a result, these drug treatment counselors make a make a living. And if marijuana is legal and we're not forcing people into treatment, they stand to lose a lot of a lot of their clientele. So we see that as well. Cool, man. Um, 
I wanted to ask you about the polls in Colorado. I've seen a few polls recently. It looks like the latest one showed that you guys are still over 50% there. Um, I talked to you earlier in the week and we were talking about one that showed, a, a, I think it was a seven or nine point lead due to the undecided voters. Um, how much trust should we put in these polls, Mason? You know, I'm always, uh, I take all polls uh, with a grain of salt. I mean, I think that they are indicative of a general, uh, you know, vicinity of where things stand, but things change. You know, the latest poll I was at 51, 40. Prior to that, it was uh, 40, it was 47 to 38 for a couple months, two times in a row. Uh, prior to that, it's 46, 42. And I think that the trend and the notion that we are ahead, I believe in that. Whether we're actually at 51 versus 48, uh, that's too hard to tell. But you know, opposition system that. 38 to 40. So there is that small group of people that still aren't sure, and, and we're doing what we can to reach those folks. We're putting a lot of money in advertising and education. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we have seen that, uh, for one thing, polls aren't always right. We know that firsthand. Denver in 2005, uh, polls showed that we were losing today, and we won. Denver, the first city in the world to vote to make marijuana for a poll. Uh, we also know that uh, in presidential elections, because there's such higher turnout, uh, the only marijuana initiatives that have ever been on the ballot in presidential elections have all increased in support. Right. Uh oh, it sounds like we're losing you on sound there, Mason. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay, yeah, we just lost the sound there for a second. I'm not sure if it's just a bad internet connection or what, but it seems to be okay. Um, maybe just uh, that last thing you said, it just cut out there. Oh, sure. Well, you know, I just mentioned that um, that uh, presidential elections have always been beneficial for this issue. And the only three times there's ever been marijuana initiatives on presidential election ballots, they've won by a, a greater margin than they were polling just the day before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were talking about advertising and some of the stuff, you know, it costs a lot of money to run one of these campaigns. What are some of the projects you guys have been doing in terms of advertising and getting the message out to people? You know, over the course of the last several months, we've done a lot of uh, a lot of earned media type events. So we, you know, we put up some billboards here and there as we've been known to do. Uh, you know, we had one with a, you know, what looked like a 50 year old woman that said, I prefer marijuana over alcohol for many reasons. Does that make me a bad person? Uh, just to spark that debate about what is the problem of you know an adult who's choosing to use marijuana? It's, it should not be seen as a, as a problem. Uh, we also had one up that uh, said, that was in a more conservative part of the state that said, Hi Robertson will, would vote yes on 64, will you? Because he had been in the New York Times saying that he supported a marijuana prohibition and the initiatives going in Colorado and Washington. And uh, we put one up that had a, a man and his son that said, please card my son, I need your help to keep marijuana out of his hands. And just trying to get, again, a discussion going about how if you're a parent and you don't want your kid to get marijuana, we're better off controlling it and, and having it better than in a black market. Uh, and then, of course, we've done some TV as well. We, we put an ad out there of a young woman, you know, sending an email to her mother day saying how she uses marijuana and she hopes her mom understands and you know we want people to just accept and that well, there's nothing wrong with using marijuana as an adult excellent man and uh, so I know that we still have a few months to go left till the end of it what are some of the biggest hurdles that you're anticipating that you guys have to overcome before you get to the end goal here well, you know, we've been up against 80 plus years of fear mongering and misinformation. And, you know, every voter in Colorado has lived their entire life with marijuana being illegal. So it is a big step. And we really need to make people comfortable because, you know, when we look at polls, we, we know that people understand by and large, you know, a majority understands that marijuana prohibition has failed. They agree that it should not be a crime for an adult, but they, you know, it's still a big new change and that's always difficult so really been working to try to bridge that by encouraging people who are supportive to talk to their friends their family and just explain like listen you know you you understand this just just do it make sure you vote for it vote yes uh that type of thing and, and we have no doubt that our opponents are going to continue with the scare tactics and 
you know, the cheap, dirty tricks to try to scare people to being opposed. But, you know, we're, we're confident that if uh, we can maintain the discussion uh, about the facts, that, that we're going to win. Exactly, man. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you about the... In Washington State, for instance, there's been a strong no campaign, not necessarily from the police unions and those people, but from the, within the movement itself. Has in Colorado there been any sort of opposition from within the movement? Uh, there has been, and not remotely in the same way that we've seen with Washington, uh, which is certainly an unfortunate situation. Um, but, uh, you know, here we do have some folks. Uh, it's, it's a much more, smaller and less organized uh, type of, of situation. Uh, but, you know, by and large, I mean, we've seen people rally around this initiative. You know, we've got uh, every single marijuana policy reform organization, well-established organization, uh, from Safer in Sensible Colorado here locally to Normal Marijuana Policy Project, the Drug Policy Alliance, the Students for Sensible Drug Policy, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. You know, everyone has come together early on. We came together to put this initiative together. And, you know, it's it's helped. We've got thousands and thousands of supporters on the ground, volunteers, all these other organizations getting involved in the initiative. So, you know, uh, it's by and large, it's it's positive uh, effort that's good to hear man i know i was a little worried when i went down to hemp fest about some of the the opposition campaign there and how strong they might be but i have a feeling that i think this year somebody's going to do it it's either going to be washington colorado or oregon so uh, we're hoping it's all three of them um mason how else can people or how can people in colorado that want to get involved in the campaign help is there much they can do well, there's, there's certainly things, if you're in Colorado, uh, we'd love to have your help. But even if you're not in Colorado, there's ways to help. So uh, particularly, I would just recommend that everyone check out, uh, more, learn more about the initiative. You know, make sure you, you understand what it is. And, and uh, you know, if you support it, uh, then we'd love to have your support. Get involved, sign up to receive email updates, alerts, hear about ways to help. Um, we are about to launch a, a phone bank that's online. So people who are not in Colorado can jump online, very simple. It brings up a name and a phone number. You call the person. Uh, you say, you know, hey, uh, you can even say, like, this is Jeremiah. You know, I'm in Vancouver, but uh, I'm calling because I, I believe in this and I, I hope that you'll, you know, look it over. What do you think? Are you going to vote? And, and that's fine. And, and we're also going to have it set up so women can call other women in and talk about it. Uh, so that's a big opportunity. It's about to get started. So People can find out about this by going to regulatemarijuana.org and signing up to receive alerts. But if you really want to help and get involved, we've set up a full action site called talkitupcolorado.org. So if you go to talkitupcolorado.org, you'll see all the ways you can help out. Lots of things online, in person, whatever. Fantastic. Excellent. I'm glad there's lots for people to do. Mason Tavert, thank you so much for coming on. Amendment 64, everybody should get out and support it if you're from Colorado. Make sure you vote this year. Gotta vote. And uh, Mason, thanks a lot for coming on. We'll have you back again before the vote, uh, I hope, anyways. I know you're a busy guy. Oh, uh, no. Always, always my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and doing what you guys do. Excellent. Well, thanks for all the hard work going on there in Colorado. Excellent. Uh, Mason Tavert. Thanks a lot. And I guess, Marius, maybe you'll, you can take care of this once we go. Thanks, Mason. Okay, see you guys later on. Yeah, peace, man. So excellent. I'm so happy to see these ballot initiatives in Colorado and other places. Um, and actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the stuff going on here in British Columbia. We also have a ballot initiative. So um, not only are Oregon, Washington State, and Colorado going to try and legalize um, this year in 2012, here in British Columbia, you may have seen on the show, we have a campaign going on called Sensible BC, which is a lowest police priority decriminalization initiative for the province of British Columbia. And it's being spearheaded by Mr. Dana Larson, who is the former editor of Cannabis Culture Magazine, founding editor, that is, with Mark Emery. Um, so Sensible BC, you should definitely go to sensiblebc.ca and check out their website. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about um, some of the concerns I was arguing with uh, somebody about Sensible BC today. Of course, there's opposition 
uh, to all of these ballot initiatives in little hints here and there online. The Washington one has a big campaign against it, but there's a, a people who have a lot of concerns, medical patients who think that once pot is decriminalized or legalized, things may be different for them. Um, the Washington State Initiative is the no campaign has attached itself to this idea of DUIs, um, and there's a lot of people on both sides who have some strong beliefs about that. Um, Marius, before we get into too much more, I just wanted to show people behind me, thanks for doing the screen, check out where we are. We're broadcasting from our lounge, the second floor, this is our new space. I'm going to get out of the way for a second here so you can see. And yeah, maybe, maybe show them what we got here. This is, um, <coughs> this is our new Pot TV studio space. And if you look around, we do have a lot of space here. So not only can we set up our brick backgrounds and have backdrops and all that kind of stuff, but we can also have the cool windows and lounge back there. Now, the lounge just opened at 4 o'clock, so it's not full right now. But uh, as we continue to do the show, I'm sure it'll fill up. I do see a couple people over there smoking away at the <laughs> volcanoes. So, yeah, this is the new lounge. Now, upstairs, we've sort of switched things around and... Jody and I and Marius now have our offices up in the old Pot TV studios with Greg, so we needed some new space, and here we are. Um, also, thanks for loading the bong, Marius. I'm going to take a hit right now, and then also take one around 4.20, which my clock is uh, wrong on. So we did have to start a little bit early today. Sorry to anybody who missed the show when we, we started. Um, unfortunately, we got our time zones a little bit mixed up, so I just wanted to have enough time to talk to Mason for the full 20 minutes. And for those who missed it, we're going to play it again at the end of the show. We'll just repeat that one performance if you give us a couple minutes at the end of the show. Um, Maris, do you have a lighter on you? I didn't bring one. Yeah. Woo. Thank you, thank you. Taking a hit out of Duchess, the three-footer here, who's downstairs with us. Delicious. Thanks, Duchess. And Marius, you're quite welcome to help yourself to this. In fact, let me grab my weed. All right, sorry to leave you hanging. It's in my backpack. So, I thought we'd also check out the chat here. Now, I'm going to, in a little bit, <coughs> go live with Mama Kind, Lisa Kirkman, who uh, recently uh, published a book called Sex Pot, and she's been getting some attention from some pretty high-profile people. Pardon the pun. Um, but yeah, we're going to check her out if we can get our Skype thing connected. Um, I'm going to have to give her a little call here before we do that. But also on the show, I hope, we're going to have Matt Murnau, cannabis champion of the universe on the show. Matt uh, got his Ruhr bong, his custom Ruhr, and his weed back from the Toronto police who had kidnapped it from him. They busted him and shook him down. Even though he's a medical patient, they took away his weed and bong when he was at Young Dundas Square for a, a movie that was happening there, a stoner movie, Dazed and Confused. So um, hopefully we'll get him on the show too. That one wasn't confirmed, but um, I'm hoping that he's feeling okay. He's been going through some health issues, so he may be broadcasting to us from his bedroom. I'm not so sure one way or another. But okay, we were talking about Sensible BC, and we're talking about there's going to be people against everything, of course. There's the people against the Washington State Initiative. And actually, I think they have some valid arguments. I think the Washington State Legalization Initiative could have been written... Uh, a lot better than it was. Unfortunately, they left some stuff in there that raised all these concerns. Whether or not it will have any effect, I'm not so sure. I don't think that uh, the DUI provisions really will change anything too much because the police themselves will still have to have a reason to pull people over. It doesn't really change anything on the level of the police bothering people. Only when it's in prosecution stage, then it gives them more tools there. But so Washington State is one. Now, Mason was saying there's some people on the no side from within the movement in Colorado, and I'm sure there's some in Oregon as well. But this morning I was having a little row online on Facebook with a person who had some concerns about the Sensible BC initiative. 
and they were they were bringing up some they were saying that they didn't like the fact that it has uh, it puts pot for minors under the supervision of the liquor control board or it adds a fine similar to finding people young people for liquor and uh, that was that was his concern that that he didn't want any fines for minors because there was a concern that uh, that that would hurt them of course and he was saying it will hurt native communities because they're the ones who get the most fines and and so I mean they're I don't like any sort of fines at all, and I wish that there wasn't, but sometimes in order to sell these initiatives to the public and make the general population who doesn't always like marijuana legalization, in order to make them see that it's a good thing and go along with it, they often pull heavily, the public does, that they are concerned about pot and driving. Um, so sometimes, like in Washington, Allison Holcomb and New Approach put in the driving stuff to try and appease them. Unfortunately, that one was... Uh, a little bit overboard, I think, and caused the community to, the medical community in Washington to, to oppose, not the whole medical community, but part of it. Um, but yeah, this one here, I think the, the concern was that the federal government would just stomp through here in British Columbia, this person's concern, and would just leave the fines behind, an added fine, and if, he, he was concerned that Stephen Harper would just tell the RCMP to enforce the laws anyway. But it's my understanding that the federal government does not control policing policy within the provinces. The, oh, this thing's fallen out. The, the Ministry of Justice in the province is responsible for policing in the province. The RCMP is a federal entity, but the provinces actually decide what they do. The Sensible BC is an effort, Marius, to defund policing and pot, pot and policing so that they won't go after anybody for possession of marijuana, they'll actually defund that portion of it. So I thought it was kind of an ingenious way to do it. Um, we can get some of the details from Kirk Tussauds soon, hopefully we'll have him on the show. Um, and yeah, so Sensible BC, I hope everybody goes and supports it. Right now, Sensible BC is in the stage where we're just collecting signatures from people so that we can approach them later when it's in an important time within a three month window and recollect their signature. So right now, go to sensiblebc.ca if you're from British Columbia and sign up so that later they can get a hold of you for the signature within that three month period. We'll have more information on the front page of Cannabis Culture, but I wanted to talk about that because on Monday, we are going to Victoria, British Columbia on the island to go to a panel uh, that's actually being hosted by Sensible BC that will feature a number of marijuana advocates. Um, Evan Wood, Dr. Evan Wood will be there and David Bratzer. Uh, David Bratzer is the head of Leap Canada. Evan is the head of Stop the Violence BC. They'll be speaking there. Um, I'll be there with Jody and Marijuana Man. We'll be recording it and broadcasting it live on Pot TV for all you folks out there. So we will definitely have a feed going on. Um, yeah, and you guys will get to see what's happening. If you're in Victoria, though, try and make it there, 7 to 9, and it's at the Alex Goulden Hall. Um, and I will put that information up, the actual address and stuff. I'll put that up on the, uh, in the show notes for you guys. There's actually a link on the front page of CannabisCulture.com right now if you want to find it. It says Sensible BC. It's right at the top. And that'll take you to more information about the panel and about Sensible BC in general. But I also wanted to talk a little bit more about the Washington State Initiative. And actually, Marius, maybe um, you should come up here and take a bong rip because I've got one loaded for you. You should come and take a bong rip. That's an essential thing. What's up, man? Colby's in the house. And uh, we're just recording live here. You should probably take a bong rip too, brother. We got, we got staff employees chilling now because we're filming in the lounge. Yeah. Are you working on this floor? I am lounge? working on this floor. Nice. It's, uh, it's pretty cool to see you guys over here. Say. It's nice to be here, actually. It's, I think I wanted to film in front of the lounge like for a while and we tried a couple times but sadly uh, our internet connection wasn't really that great there because we were using wireless in a brick building in a different room. Now we have it piped right through. <coughs> no more problems with the internet, hopefully. When's the last time you cleaned that? Floor? This thing is it's pretty clean. It's not that filthy. It's not that filthy. It's me then. I apologize. Yeah, it's alright. Here, we'll, uh, we'll take care of that. Lungs of steel. Lungs of steel. And I'll load you one up, my friend. 
Word. So how is the new lounge? This is the second floor of the lounge. The second floor. Maybe tell people how the lounge is, <coughs> is it, going these days. It's going pretty good. It's like the uh, the chill spot to come down and uh, hang out. If uh, it's too busy going on upstairs, come down here. So it's usually a lot more quieter. We've got a different view of West Hastings Street as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I kind of, I'd like to take the camera over to the window, but I think we're, our cord is probably a little short. We'll probably broadcast our next episode a little closer to the windows. Maybe we can do anything we want up here. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> and Tyler's there too. What's up, Tyler? What's up, guys? Getting the shot. We can see you there. Oh hell yeah! You want a bong rip? Oh yeah! Everybody's getting bong rips. See, this is the. The problem is I'll be distracted giving everybody bong rips. And Marius, here's the other thing. Maybe while I'm giving these guys some bong rips, do you want to try and get a hold of Mama Kind? It's getting close to that time. Oh, actually, is it just about <coughs> 420 right now, isn't it? Nice. Um, so, yeah, we should probably get a hold of Mama Kind and see if she's available. Um, I'll, I'll give her a shout right now on this little phone. And Marius, can you man the the device on this side once we get a hold of her. Oh, I hear the 420 alarm. The 420 alarm. Oh yeah, somebody asked about Fiona Apple. So um, I was hoping to play you guys this video. Hi, Mama Kind, how are you? I'm good, I'm just on the air right now and uh, wondering if you're around on Skype these days. We thought we'd I am. Oh, see you. Well, look at that. Wow. Full screener. No, I can't. You won't be able to see me, but I'm standing next to you. All right. Can we hang out now, or can you we can... want to? Yeah, we're live right now, actually. So we might as well just chill out. We. Uh... All right. It's 4:20 right now, actually, isn't it? 4:20. Woo! We got my new bong cozy. Where's your bong cozy? <laughs> oh bon yeah. Cozy. That is awesome. I think I saw one. You had this before at, uh, oh, you were carrying it around. It's so cool. Yes, at, at TY. That's yeah. Karen Watermelon's Bong Cozies. That was her personal one. This is the one that she made for me. This is a custom, this is Bong Couture. This is a custom, uh, custom cozy. Nice. Yeah. It's very attractive. Yes. Oh, and I love your, your Pussy Riot shirt. Yes, and my, my uh, previous year at church. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you look gorgeous, as usual. Thank you, darling. There you go. Now, I don't know, do we have a lag, or is that... Or, I can't see your, your mouth moving. I'm not sure if we have a lag or not. Are we, I don't know. Can you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have a bit of a lag, actually, but hopefully that's okay with people. Her, she'll be lip-syncing the whole time. It'll look like a <laughs> kung fu movie. Is that better? Uh, yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. We can still get most of you there. <clears throat> so, Mama Kind, there's been some, uh, I had you on the show last time after you had published your book, Sex Pot, and yeah. we had a great conversation. It was one of my favorite episodes ever. It was hilarious. But um, I wanted to ask you about the recent news about your book. Some uh, very well-known person was reading it, I guess. And that was Rihanna. What, That's right. What did she say? She would. She Instagram something, right? Yeah. Um, uh, apparently, she uh, she sent out an Instagram from her official Instagram account, the, a picture of my book that was sitting on a bed or something like that, and it said uh, my new encyclopedia. So. That's pretty dope. Apparently, uh, yeah, apparently uh, Sex Pot uh, is uh, Rihanna's new encyclopedia, which is good because she, she does have real relationship issues. So I, I feel quite, you know, honored that, that she considers my my advice to be that uh, profound that uh, she uh, she's considers it her encyclopedia, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's a pretty huge endorsement. She's got like, I don't know how many... Thousands of Twitter fans and Instagram fans, because her Twitter actually piggybacks onto her, her or her Instagram piggybacks onto her Twitter. That's right. So it went on her official Twitter as well, on on just at Rihanna or whatever it is. Yeah, that's so millions of people. It had like that. I think the, just off the Instagram account, um, something like fifty thousand likes just on that post in wow. like four hours or something like that. 
And wow. uh, I think already there's like, over, I think there's around a thousand comments. Um, yeah. That's so fantastic. We're pretty excited. A lot of people are, where do I get the book? And Yeah, hopefully know, that uh, translates into book sales. I hope so. I think so. I, I mean, I would, I would, gosh, I would, I would hope so. Um, that is a pretty good in endorsement, and uh, it's a pretty good book, if I do say so myself. So well, and for those, uh, I thought, and I thought it's getting a little bit of um, a little bit of the publicity. I think it, I think it deserves, anyways. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about your book because you were on the show last time. But and for those who didn't, <laughs> for those who didn't see that, can you explain a little bit about your book and what's in it? Sure. This is it. That's oh, backwards. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. It's That's called the one. Sex. Nice. Uh oh. Did we lose you? I think we lost you. Aw, oh, mama kind. Looks like we lost you. Well, we should try and re get her on here. Um, Marius, do you want to give that a try? Is it? Oh. That's my Kermit the Frog on the bottom there, wearing a connecting. Maybe we're recalling. I wanted to take a bong rip anyway. Didn't want to be rude or anything. So now's the good time to do it. Can you pass me a lighter again? That's a Mac for us, somebody said. Oh, our lighter got scammed? Those staff people, they're always ganking lighters from everybody. Um, okay, well maybe I should take control of this thing and see what's going on. It It doesn't look like it's actually connecting. Though. Let's hang out. Let me try it again. Video. She said, give me a sec, my Mac just rebooted for no reason. What the fuck? I'll see. Okay, so not a big deal. She will join us shortly. I'm sure when she reconnects online. Um, and I'm going to take this bong rib. And actually, Marius, were you going to... I wanted to ask you about something as well, but we can probably do that afterwards. Okay. Um, I was going to ask Marius about something else that happens on this floor on a weekly basis, and that's the Ganja Yoga classes that happen down here. Now, Marius has been going to some of them. I wanted to talk to him about those as well. But I guess I won't be taking a hit of this bong until we have a lighter. Oh, look what I have in my pocket. I have one. I was lying the whole time. I had a little lighter. I found a lighter in my pocket. No. It was a different one. Thanks, Duchess. Um, yeah, there was a couple things I wanted to talk about. One was the Fiona Apple situation. Fiona Apple is a singer who was arrested in Texas and had four grams of hash on her and four grams of pot on her. And now it looks like she's facing 10 years. People are saying free Fiona Apple in the chat. Thanks, Oaksterdam. Um, yeah, that's really savage. Now, I was just reading that if she had a hair over four grams of hash, because it's under those extract laws or these new drugs that mimic cannabis but aren't like the synthetics it fits under those ones I guess um, if it was over four grams she could, could be looking at 20 years so hopefully it's under four grams they say it is um, but that's really crazy I'm sure that this will bring a lot of attention to the laws in Texas and across the United States though because people know who Fiona Apple is unless the media just ignores it which they often do but she's like a pretty girl it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a big deal my internet just crapped out. One sec, Mama Kind says. I'm going to say, okay, cool. All right, yeah, so that's really sad about Fiona Apple. And I don't really know her music very well or anything, but uh, I'm sure that she's got a lot of fans out there who are sad about that. And, of course, Lady Gaga was the other artist I wanted to talk, talk about. Um, oh, we have Mama Kind calling back here. Let's go to the video phone. Oh, I'm not hitting it. There we go. Hello. Mama Kind's back. Sorry about that. I oh, have that's no all right. I have no idea what happened there. 
Oh, it happens sometimes. But you know what? Now it, you look like uh, we don't have the the lag we had before, so that's a good thing. Your computer oh. probably needed a reboot. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, we we're, were back. I know I give you a chance to take a hit. One sec. Yeah. And I, I just took a big bong rip myself, actually. Oh, she's got her bong cozy. Nice. Now, does that bong have a name? Um, I, I, I call it my mama kind bong, just simply because it's got my name uh, in glass in the top there. Oh, it was a custom so, make for mama kind. Yeah, it's my mama kind bong. I have a bigger bong uh, that uh, is, is sort of in, in the hospital right now. It needs to be... Fixed. Oh no! So, yeah, so I'm I'm just using this one in the cozy and does the trick. <laughs> cool, I love that cozy. It is. It's one. I've worn this to party. I've gone to all sorts of things and it's great. It doesn't spill. I can. I wore it. Uh, gosh, I've worn it. Uh, I've ridden my bike with it. <laughs> there you go. And so, yeah. Mama, can you were telling us about your book? Oh, yes. Yes, and I don't think you got very far in telling us, or I'm really not sure how far you got, but I don't think very far. Okay, yes. It's called Sex Pot Marijuana Lover's Guide to Get Gone. Yes. And what it is is a uh, compilation of my sex and relationship and pot advice columns and quizzes and sort of true autobiographical stories. Uh, and the, they're all from Skunk Magazine, so my, my uh, time there, and I... They're compiled and uh, put together in a book. Uh, Ed Rosenthal and his great guru of ganja wisdom decided that uh, it would make us some good reading. And, uh, so, yeah, now there's the book, and, and uh, I guess reality is good reading. So. That's right. Now, and it looked like in the tweet she actually, or in the Instagram, she was giving somebody else props for giving it to her or something. I yes, noticed that. I think it's I, of whom I think. After a little bit of investigation, I think she uh, somehow in production just my own stick, you know, snooping. This is kind of what I I think she's a friend somehow. To, uh, oh, we're I, losing sound on you again, sadly. Um, you, can get, you, know, you can look at as a friend. Mama, kind, we can't hear you anymore for some reason. Hello. Hello. Now, now we can. We heard hello, but that was the only thing we heard. Uh, I'm not sure why we're losing our Skype connection, but Skype doesn't like when I do gratuitous plugs for my book. I think. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gives throws throws you sometimes. Facebook um, doesn't. I'm not allowed to put ads for my book on Facebook. I tried. I was, they they will not let me. Uh, you're not allowed to advertise anything to do with sex. Really? It wasn't even the marijuana, it was the sex. Maybe, wow. yeah. Oh. What, no. I wonder, I read an article recently that said that Facebook is now planning on charging for any kind of advertising at all on their site, whether, like, if you have a business page, you can't oh. put ads for your stuff anymore. They're going to charge, like, $5 an ad or something. David Mamo Levine, how you doing, brother? Hello, Mama Kai. Hey, David Mamo Levine. I heard you're famous now. <laughs> Just a little, a little more infamous, maybe. Nice. <laughs> That's right. So, but Mama Kind, you were also telling me earlier. I don't know if you want to break that news on my show or what. Uh, we we were talking about somebody else contacted you. Oh right, yeah. Um, so then I get a call from TMZ. You know the uh, uh, the Hollywood American uh, um, tabloid entertainment tabloids, paparazzi. Yeah, people. they're huge. They're really big. They are. They are. They're like they're the main dudes. I, 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 I you know, I actually, I will admit to uh, watching the show even sometimes. This is pretty amusing. I think, anyways, the way they, they're, they're that style of uh, journalism. Yeah, it's really <laughs> and, tabloid. Uh, I get a call, and actually, I got several calls from them uh, yesterday. Um, interested in the story, wanting to find out more about the book, wanting to find out more why why they think Rihanna would uh, like my book. Uh, and, and also, what's interesting about what Rihanna's been posting over the last several months is she doesn't post a whole lot off of her Instagram, but, but the, some of the few things that she's been posting have been 
um, these sort of pot the uh, horoscopes, mm -hmm. uh, which some people think are from my book, which aren't actually from my book, um, but whatever. Uh, and I think Bible script, Bible quotes, things like that, um, and my book. Wow. So she doesn't have a lot of like wide variety of reading, it seems. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that benefiting you, though. There you go. Yeah, if you got to read two books this year, and one of them is a Bible, the other and one should be. It's a nice contrast. Sex pot. You know, I, I think I, that there was some I, mention of pussy toking in the Bible as well, right? I think that my, it's just the Bible mentioned I don't think so. I, maybe I'm getting my sources incorrect. There. No, no. Jesus did say, "Blessed are the keef queefers," but uh, <laughs> that was edited out of the later translations. Right. Didn't make it in the King James it's version. In, it's in the original Aramaic and, and uh, Hebrew. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is somewhere back there because um, us Jews do like to, to hit the bong. Uh, that is a tradition that goes back. As far as far as there have been um, Jews, so <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure it's probably in there. So, yeah. Well, so yeah, okay. We were talking about the book now, and we were talking. I just mentioned pussy tokes, but that's one of the things that uh, you talked about on your last show, and it's one of the things that I'm wondering if maybe Rihanna has tried. I don't know what if she's trying the things that are in your book, but <laughs> well, she's. A, I don't know if you if you. I mean, uh, if you follow her music at all, like she's she's got quite of a kink slant. You know, she's known as sort of a a bad girl, and um, uh, she, you know, she's got that one song about BDSM. Yes. Um, pretty kinky videos, and of course, she's a pretty hardcore bomb slut, as everybody knows. She doesn't make any secrets about that. So I don't think it's a it's a farce. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a stretch to think that you would be attracted to uh, <laughs> some of the activities featured in, in the book. You should, uh, some of the more, uh, shall we say, extreme activities you featured should tweet in the book. Her. You, um, should, you should tweet as her and ask her what, what she is, likes. Is, most of the book is, is pretty vanilla. You know, it's not all uh, crazy, tie me up and uh, put a paraphernalia in other orifices. You, you know who else likes to get spanked? And, oh. and get high at the same time. Who? Sarah Silverman. Oh, yeah. yeah On David know. Letterman, she confessed uh, to getting spanked. Her mom saw a big handprint on her ass. And, and her mom said, oh my God, Sarah, did it hurt? And she replied, you know, I was so high, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so... Good answer. Yeah, so you know what um, I would like to see is if you could arrange this, um, have Rhiannon and Sarah Silverman spanking each other and smoking each other up, maybe some shotgun gun kisses or something like that. Um, oh. I'd really like to see that. I would really like to see that too. I think that they would make a lovely um, mocha mix of, uh, of stoner um, stardom. Uh, that would be just lovely to behold. You've got Sarah there and the very sort of kind of natural, you know, girl. And then you got the Rihanna with her whole pop star thing. I would like to see that too. And you put a lovely image in my head. And, uh, you know, perhaps one day I will be able to pass that on to one or both or most likely neither of them, but maybe <laughs> one of them anyways, and, and say, hey, you know, Riri, uh, I think we should get together with uh, Miss Sarah Silverman and um, explore other, uh, you know, uh, other, you know, sex, sensi sexuality uh, activities. Life that is short. You may not have considered before. Exactly. And Life is too short not for that to at least... At the very least, have your agent call their agent. Yes. And so I guess that would be Ed Rosenthal calling up on that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ed, and that's maybe, Rihanna there. Then again, maybe not. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that we uh, at Skunk Skunk um, has a. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but we there's a uh, resort in Jamaica. It's called Pure uh, Cannabis Themed Resort in Negril. And Skunk yeah. actually did extend this. This is not a joke. I extended the invitation. 
to um, uh, through Island Def Jam. Uh, I expect the other takes to Rihanna and her her crew to come down to uh, the grill, and I would give her. Uh oh, audio. We, we lost you again, there, Mama Kind. Hold on a sec. Um, we lost our audio again. Yeah, exactly. No. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Take a bong rip. Maybe oh, no. we need one too. Oh no. Yeah, that's it's all right. The CIA agent who's they didn't want overhearing that's right. got too excited and hit a button. The, she extended the uh, invitation to Jamaica to Rihanna. Yes. Sounds like it'd be fun. Free pussy riot. I'll take ten. Are, are, is anyone hearing any audio? I think it's only one for each person. Is there <laughs> one per, free pussy riot, one per person? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you have a family, it's, you know. I think it would be Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can yes, hear you now. Yes, now we can oh, hear you. Oh, you can? Yeah. yeah. All right. Sometimes Skype so, just... So you were telling us how you were going to organize a photo oh, yeah. shoot in well, it's, Jamaica it's been, between Rhiannon and Sarah has Silvana. has been extended. Yes. Uh, to Rihanna through her publicist to uh, come down, um, be hosted by by Skunk and and um, Pure uh, Resort down in a grill, and uh, of course I would be down there and I would give her personal bong slut wisdom consultations, um, pussy toking, um, technical support. You know, like the genius bar at the Apple store, I'm the I would have this around my neck and I would give her genius um, stoner chick support. The penis and, bar. and of course relationship advice, uh, that, that that she truly uh, needs, I think. And we would hang out and we would burn a few down and uh, I think it would be a lovely time. And maybe and if that happens I you thank you for inspiring me. Maybe I will extend the invitation to Miss Sarah Silverman, and perhaps Lady Gaga. Yeah! Lady, oh, Miss Lady Gaga, who my God. would, I think, very much be interested in, in an extended uh, I imitation to uh, uh, spankings and, and uh, bong hits. Hell uh, yeah! I'm just guessing there, but, you know. I'm sure, it seems to be based on the evidence, the recent evidence. Of course, I'd for those say. who don't know, she was smoking in Amsterdam on stage. And That's got right. up and puffed down a whole bunch and blew the. I saw that. That was that amazing was pretty awesome. footage. Yeah, and People she said were throwing tobacco up on stage and she was sniffing yeah. each tobacco cigarette and going, no, nope, yeah, no, nope, no, nope. and then someone threw a joint up on stage. She's like, finally. And she said it was a wondrous plant and she uses it for spiritual purposes and that it changed her life. That's what she said. So uh, it's a pretty shining endorsement. Excellent. Yeah. Now you gotta have to somehow get her a copy of Sex Pot. I will. I will get her a copy of, of Sex Pot if you have to pass on her copy. I think. I think you should also send a copy, or somebody should. Maybe I will to Howard Stern. I think he'd like to know about uh, what's going on in that book. He'd like to have I, you on the show. You know, I did. I, I have sent him a, a copy before, but maybe um, now that I've moved from like uh, Q-list celebrity to. Um, like each list celebrity, I don't know. Would Maybe you, he'll, yeah. he'll pick up on it now. Who knows? Would, uh, would you uh, ride the Sibian for Howard Stern? I would. I would ride the Sibian for. I'd probably ride the Sibian for you, hon, if you ask me. <laughs> on the <laughs> would you ride the Sibian the next time you come on Pot TV? Oh Jesus! If you want to go that way, sure. <laughs> what an interview! It's your network. Dude, it's your internet network, man. That, that shit would go viral. Probably I think would. it could very well go viral. I would, you know, I I'm not one that that lives likes to live in the closet, and what, no matter what I do, I I'm a strong believer in um, pleasure uh, amongst adults. No matter how you go about it, as long as you're not hurting anybody, and it's between okay. consenting adults, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, there, that's nothing to be ashamed of, and it's right. uh, certainly nothing to hide. And everybody has the right to. Um, you know, flip to another station or turn it off or fast forward or whatever you want to do. Okay, uh, so the Sibian challenge is to smoke a whole joint while sitting on the Sibian turned up to full. Oh. That's, a, that's, that's the, the Mama Kind. That's the DML Sibian challenge. Sibian pot challenge. Yeah. 
Well, I'm not going to do it. it. Sibian won't do anything for me anyway. Right. Well, I would say and an even the, greater challenge would be to smoke, to smoke uh, a, a, a bong and do that because that would actually take you to more <laughs> coordination. Yeah, not a glass bong though. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, no, yeah, you're probably on a nice. Yeah, well, you guys right. can work out the details. Unbreakable or wooden bong. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll we'll work on that, Dave. Give me an email and. <laughs> yeah, the co we'll coordinate it. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Well, so, yeah, I guess that's a pretty crazy endorsement from Rihanna. That's fantastic. I guess you won't know about uh, book sales for a while or something, but even if a small percentage of her readership, which is like on her Twitter account, something in the millions, isn't it? Like she seriously has millions yeah. of people following after. Her. So even well, if a very small percentage go and look for it, cha ching. Yeah. I would, well, I, I'm just, I'm hoping, you know, it's funny, my daughter, she's 10, and she goes, she, Mama, Rihanna likes your book? I said, yeah. She says, I mean, other people are going to buy your book? I said, I, I hope so. Yeah, I think so, maybe. And she goes, does that mean we can get a cat? <laughs> That's all she was concerned about. That's, if we get a cat, so you know when I have a cat, I have arrived. <laughs> right, exactly. That's so, a step up. we haven't quite bought, bought, bought the cat yet, but um, I don't know. I, I, I just... I'm, I take this as like a lovely, uh, wonderful gift that, you know, um, very, it's very flattering and I'm trying not to put too much, too much stock into it, you know what I mean? Uh, right. So otherwise, uh, you know, it, I, would, I would just be thinking about it all the time and uh, <laughs> I do have other things going on in my life, so. Of course, of course. Uh, But, you know, it's, it is cool and I hope, I hope people read it because I think it is a helpful book. I honestly... It, it is very funny, and, and uh, there's some interesting stories in there, but there is some honest uh, questions asked of me, and uh, I try to give always uh, honest answers, um, very heartfelt uh, questions about, I get about relationship and sex, and uh, some with cannabis, some with not. not. Uh, but, you know, everybody can use a little, a little perspective from somebody else every once in a while, so... I hope I hope maybe that at the very least some people take that away from the book, you know. They buy no matter why they buy it. Whoever suggests they buy it. But, uh, right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for. So, where can people find it though? I guess the best place to get it is from Quick Trading itself or Amazon maybe. Our best place to go is probably. It's probably what? Say it again. Amazon.com is the best place to go, okay. probably, just because it's just the easiest for everybody, no matter where you are in the world. Um, other than that, uh, you can go yeah, You can go to Quick Trading and they'll, they'll direct you where, where you can get it. You can go to, I always encourage people to go to a local independent books. You can definitely get it in chapters or, or uh, one of the, you know, Barnes & Noble down in the States. Uh, but if you can support your local hemp store uh, or your local store, uh, please do so. And if they're not carrying it, or, or adult store, sex store as well, if they're not carrying it, suggest Ask for it. Yeah, tell them to bring it in and say that uh, a lot of people, uh, including Rihanna, would like, it, it might enjoy reading it. So uh, There you go. Well, and you can get it at 307 West Hastings here in Vancouver at our store. We have copies of it upstairs. I know that for sure. Or I mean downstairs. We're on the second floor. <laughs> so uh, excellent, Mama Kind. We'll have to have you back again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure with you as well. Mama Kind. And, of course, now, Mama Kind, are you still writing columns for Skunk? You're still working on other projects? Because uh, yes, of course, I'm still with Skunk Magazine. I'm still the editor at large there, and all. But I'm also looking at. Uh, you know what? We've lost you again in sound. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm so sorry, but it doesn't like you giving plugs for some reason <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can just mime it out to us. Mime the letters, sign language will do the trick. No, we can't hear you, unfortunately. But Mama Kind, you were awesome. Thanks for stopping by. We can still see you. Yeah, she does. We can still see her. Yeah, she's doing sign language now. <laughs> oh, maybe I heard a noise. A rustle. <laughs> you hear me? Oh, you're no, there. Just barely. Yeah, I tell it's you like poltergeist or something.
Hustler Canada. I'm the asshole of the month column. The asshole of the month in Hustler in the States is Larry Flint's column. It's his opinion column that he puts out every month. Yeah. And I have been, I am now the um, asshole of the month. Uh, so my first uh, one just came out. Uh, it's the November 2012 issue, which came out actually the September. So that's all I can. So, it's, oh, just when we need the vital information, it yeah. cuts out. Of course, it's such a bizarre thing. Canada. So it was. <laughs> it's in it's in Hustler magazine. That's what we got about that much. We know that there's something to do with Larry Flint's column, and you're in it. Is that right? No, no, I'm writing it. Oh, you're writing it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay. You're ghostwriting asshole of the month. Hustler Hustler magazine has started. Hustler Canada, their Canadian version, oh. because Canadian beeper rocks, and uh, they have, it, they wanted their asshole of the month. They wanted a Canadian writer, of course, to Canadian asshole of the month. So they asked to be uh, their official asshole of the month. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, it's hard not to make carp. Harper. Uh, I think I got Harper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on. I'm sorry about the sound troubles. I don't know, Skype. Sometimes it's not as good as you think it is. But it's not bad. Yeah. We love you, Mama Kai. Have another bong hit. Yeah, have another bong hit. We're going to do the same around here. Mama kind. So yeah, find her book on Amazon. I think I put a link to it on the show notes already, so you can go to the front page of Cannabis Culture right now and find a link to Mama Kind's. Oh, and now our screen went black. Is our screen black? Oh dear. Okay. Good. Okay, Mama, what do you got? Postcards! New postcards for the Herb Museum. They're really cool. Check that shit out. That is very cool. Yeah. And, uh, Did you, you want, want to bother it? I'm all so high. Oh, Here. okay. And but I so, packed it for you. Uh, David, I was talking a little bit about some of Sensible BC's detractors. Oh, yeah. Well, you know me. I'm not one to just go for any old reform. Yeah. I look at them first. But I couldn't see any downside to this. There's not going to be any new penalties. Yeah. There's not going to be... It's not going to fund the police. It's not going to threaten med pot rights of any kind yeah uh it's not going to install a discriminatory licensing process it doesn't touch any of the retail side it's just about stopping the arrests of adult users of cannabis it doesn't make anything any worse for young people if anything it makes it a little better because they can't get arrested and put in handcuffs all they can do is give them a fine and you know i think they're going to be ignoring marijuana use from adults and, and kids as much as they were before. It's just like they can't do anything about adults even if they wanted to. They're not allowed to spend any money on fines or any money on punishments of any kind mm -hmm. with regards to adults. Now could Stephen Harper still instruct the RCMP to arrest people for possession? Or isn't it, I thought the Ministry of Justice in each province is responsible for the policing that we'll, happens in the province. We'll find out what try to work around they try to do to keep prohibition going. But that's not an excuse not to, to try every form of reform mm -hmm. that is more of a plus than a minus. And I don't see any minuses to this. So what if Stephen Harper tries to do something? We can try to stop him from doing that. Mm -hmm. And then he's on the defense and we're on the attack better than leaving him to his own devices to figure out how we can shut the rest of our community down. That's right. Like, and I haven't, and none of the detractors I've heard of come up with any better plan. Like, their, their plan is to do nothing, to sit around on your ass and wait for Justin Trudeau to legalize marijuana. Well, you know, the odds of that happening are both fat and slim, and I just think it's better to try new stuff. The U.S. has got a bunch of initiatives going on, including three legalization initiatives. And some people say the same thing, oh, we shouldn't try any of those because of what the feds will do. Well, that's not, for me, a good enough reason not to try new things. I'm, I'm in favor of two of the three initiatives in the States, and I'm in favor of Sensible BC here, and I'm hard to please when it comes to initiatives, believe me. Yes. I stuck my neck out on Prop 19. I came out against the Washington Initiative, and I, I uh, came out against AB 
two, three, one, two. Yeah. And so I just don't say yes to anything. Yes. Yeah. But I'm saying yes to sensible BC. We need a bunch of signature gatherers in every section of British Columbia. So if you live in BC and you want to see marijuana use by adults put on the lowest police priority officially and make sure they can't spend a cent on busting adults for marijuana use, then join Sensible BC and become a signature gatherer so then when it comes time to gather these signatures, we have enough we can, we can make it happen. That's, that's what it's going to take, folks. Yes, the postcards are on sale at the BC Marijuana Party. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. It, they're for two bucks each, and they're by Superstar. A little closer. Go right up to the camera. Uh, they're they're for two bucks each, and uh, yeah, they are awesome postcards. You can see there's like an Escher marijuana leaf in there, a marijuana leaf that fits into an into itself so yeah check that and check out the herb museum check it out on the second floor of the bc marijuana party if you are in vancouver and if you're not in vancouver check it out online at herbmuseum.ca okay well uh, i gotta run david. awesome david thank you very much cpod tv viewers david, i'm just uh i'm actually on the phone right now with mr matt murnau uh and actually matt now i'm back on the air here on the microphone but uh, I, I'll just relay the message that, yeah, yes, yes, you did get both your bong and your weed back. How much weed did they have of yours? Six grams. Wow, so you got all six back? Did they smoke any? They smoked a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Matt thanks everybody who called the Toronto Police Services. That's the message he wants me to relay. Well, Matt, I appreciate you talking to me anyway. I know you're not feeling so well or whatever. I'm going to let you go, but uh, yeah, we'll have you on the next show or something like that. Awesome. And I guess we can watch your show on Tuesday and Thursday. Is that still going on on Thursdays? Okay, cool. He's hoping to do them again shortly, and but Tuesday you can find you every Tuesday. Awesome. Okay, brother. Thanks for talking. We'll talk soon. See you, Matt. Yeah, bye. So Matt says, uh, sorry, he, he can't do the Skype thing, but he's not set up. He's in his PJs. I said we're fine with his PJs. But, <laughs> but yeah, you can find Matt on Tuesdays, of course. Um, Marius, do you want a bong rip? This one looks like nothing actually happened here. I'm going to take this one again. Whew, I put some lung into that one. Delicious. Yeah, that's a little clogged. It took a lot of second. So that was a fun show. Mama Kind's always awesome as a guest, and Mason Tavert was very cool from Colorado, the effort to legalize there. Um, <coughs> Marius, I was going to ask you, well, I wanted to talk about one of them anyway, was the yoga, Ganja Yoga. That, Ganja Yoga. That's something that goes on right in this very spot, isn't it, Marius? And what happens when? Uh, well, it happens right here behind us in this beautiful lounge. Uh, Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Sundays, going from 10, 11, and 12, uh, respectively. Uh, Di Dusso, who's taught Ganja Yoga for um, several years, or uh, three years at least, in Toronto, has uh, moved to Vancouver recently. Uh, she's also just co come back from Burning Man. Uh, and we're going to get some posters up soon and it's, um, I'm sorry, it's $15 a session, however nobody will be turned away for lack of funds. So uh, if you uh, love ganja and uh, you want to do yoga for, for uh, exercise or spirituality or for whatever, whatever uh, wonderful reasons there are to you, 
yoga. I've been to almost every class, and, and I love it. My body loves it. I mean, I feel so much better. It's so much easier to do stuff. Um, you know, uh, you'll thank yourself, and your body will thank you, too, for coming. So that's, that's here at, on the second floor of VCMP at 303 West Hastings. Um, like I said, Tuesday at 10, Thursday at 11, and Sunday at noon. Um, there's, there's a couple of other things I'd like to mention. Uh, if you like uh, electronic music, uh, go on Thursday nights, go to Organics, which is at the Vinyl Lounge on Abbott Street. I'm not sure the exact address. It's free before 9.30, otherwise it's 6 bucks. And it's a really uh, beautiful community atmosphere, and there's a lot of psychedelic colors and other psychedelic things there. Um, and uh, tomorrow at SFU, uh, starting at noon, uh, there's a Women in Psychedelic Shaman conference. I always get the, the name mixed up. Uh, you can get your tickets $30 at Banyan Books. Um, I'm going to be there, and I'll give you guys a blog report and some photographs and anything else I can next week. Awesome. Thanks, Marius. Fantastic. Hey, no worries. Did you take the bong rip yet? Right. Well, I guess uh, that's the show. We actually wrapped it up in about an hour this time, although we did start a little early. So I guess what we'll do is we'll play the beginning of the show right afterwards. We'll just loop it through so the people that yeah, missed the beginning. Tell them the live stream will let us uh, upload any clips. Yeah, okay, there's, there's no things clips, happening. So yeah, yeah, no, I didn't mention it, but yeah. it's all right. We'll get all that stuff worked out. Um, but... Yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for watching the show. Friday again, we'll be back next Friday. Um, actually, we'll be back before that, though, because Monday night we'll be broadcasting live from Victoria. Now, McMahon will be doing his show. I'm not sure if he's going to be doing his show because he may be on the way down to Victoria. He may be joining us there and actually taking part in the Pod TV broadcast that night or th during the uh, panel in Victoria for Sensible BC. Now... I'm not sure we'll figure that out with Mick later, but we'll definitely see on Monday one way or another. And then, of course, you can always find lots of stuff going on at Pod TV all the time. Pod.tv. That's where you are right now. Uh, all right, guys. Peace out. And I don't know if I have the studio here. I do. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go and resume us for now. But in just a few minutes, we'll press the button, and you guys can watch the beginning of the show again. So we'll we'll loop it. It'll just take a minute or two. All right. Peace, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next week. See you on Monday night.